to have a situation where you manipulate a mass global vaccination program uh, to target the population uh, at one time. We're seeing this now with the swine flu. I was told in 1997 by a CIA scientist who asked to meet me to get lots of information out that he couldn't, that in 1997, in the secret projects and the underground bases, they had microchips that were so small they could be inserted uh, into people through a hypodermic needle in vaccination programs, and that was the plan. All these years later, of course, we now have a name for this technology. We call it nanotechnology. Uh, and he was saying that the plan was to use vaccination programs to insert these microchips. Then you look at other examples of this. For instance, in 1969, there was a doctor uh, called Dr. Richard Day, who was head at the time of Planned Parenthood, which of course is a eugenics organization, which used to have eugenics in its name. And he told doctors in Philadelphia, or Pittsburgh, I think, P Pittsburgh, in uh, 1969, a series of things that he said were going to happen in the years to come to transform society and bring in this control system. And when you look at what he said, compared with what's happening now, it's extraordinarily accurate. And some of the areas he covered were that they were going to create new viruses in laboratories that were resistant to drugs, that they were going to use that to cull the population, that they were going to use vaccinations to cull the population, and also that they were going to uh, change the way that healthcare treated old people so that more and more old people died um, and didn't go long into, into life because from their extraordinarily sick perspective, old people are useless to them. And what we're looking at now very clearly is this attempt to play that card of mass global immunization with an a, uh, excuse of this manufactured virus to uh, get access to the, the bodies, the body computer systems, as I would say, of, of, of almost everyone on the planet. And they're not doing that because they want to protect people from anything. Crikey, the force that's saying be vaccinated is the force that created the virus which they're saying be vaccinated against. They're doing this to get access to the global population for very, very malevolent reasons. And um, what people need to realize is that these uh, families do not come from the same perspective of life and respect that we do. They, tr they see humans like cattle, nothing more than cattle, and most humans see cattle. They uh, therefore have no empathy with the consequences for the human population of their actions. So if people say, they'd never do that, mate, no, no, you'd never do that. They do it all the time. There are two classic techniques of mass mind manipulation and emotional manipulation. Uh, one of them I call problem reaction solution, the other one I call the totalitarian tiptoe. Problem reaction solution is devastating. It's been used for as long as you can chart back human history. And it goes like this. Um, you want to change society or get people to accept something that in the normal course of events they wouldn't accept. Um, so you don't say openly, this is what we're going to do and this is why we're going to do it. You, you play this technique, uh, PRS, Problem Reaction Solution. Stage one, you create a problem. It could be uh, a manufactured virus in a laboratory. It could be a, a, an economic collapse. It could be a war. It could be a terrorist attack like 9-11. You then, through a pathetic, unquestioning media, which at ownership level and lower levels too you control, you get them through the media, you tell the people the version of that problem that you want them to believe, um, i.e. swine flu broke out on a pig farm in Mexico. Yeah, flying pig farm, thank you very much. Uh, that 9-11 was orchestrated by a guy with a beard in, a, in a, uh, a cave in Afghanistan and all that stuff. You want a reaction at stage two from the public of outrage of classically fear, and you want them to either say, to the authorities do something or you want them to accept what the authorities suggest must be done.
So you can go to stage three, which is to offer the solutions to the problems you have covertly created. And with the swine flu, and whenever I say swine flu, I mean swine flu in, in, uh, in, in quote marks, because it's not swine flu, it's a combination of flus created in a laboratory. The swine flu uh, scam is classic problem reaction solution. You create the virus, you put it out there, you say, oh, there's a problem. We must have a solution, which is the vaccine. And of course, you then find that the patents for the vaccine were applied for before the virus was <laughs> put out and people started to, uh, to, to uh, get the consequences of it. It's, it's, it's quite obviously a blatant scam. And through the mainstream media that doesn't connect these dots, which are there to be connected to anyone with a brain cell on active duty, the vast majority of the public go along with it. But what's really encouraging at this point where I speak uh, is the number of people um, who are saying no to this and their backbones need to stay stiff when the pressure comes on more and more to, to uh, accept it, uh, to, to say no and keep saying no. Because this vaccination program is a key fundamental brick, plank, whatever you want to call it, within this whole agenda. And if, if we can throw a spanner in the works of this and have vast numbers of people refuse the vaccine, it actually throws a spanner in the works of, of so much more that is due to come along afterwards. People have asked me uh, over the years, uh, you know, what's planned? Um, and I've said, read two books, George Orwell's 1984 and Aldous Huxley's Brave New World. The latter was published in 1932, uh, Orwell's book was in 1948. Because these two had access to the agenda through something called the Fabian Society, they weren't writing from uh, imagination. They had a, a, an understanding of where this was supposed to go. And in Brave New World, you have Aldous Huxley describing a society in which children are disconnected from their parents, where they're bred in laboratories, and where drugs are used to get the children to, and as they become adults, the whole population to love their servitude and not rebel against it. And we are now seeing quite blatantly the movement to remove children from their parents. It's been done through what I call the totalitarian tiptoe, step by step by step by step, where more and more parental rights are taken by the state more and more and more and where the school becomes uh, ever more uh, powerful in, in the, the, the control it has over the children. And now we're moving into areas that we, we have staggeringly extreme as they may seem, they're no longer uh, rare, this is commonplace where in Britain, and I know from the research I've done for a, the book I'm writing at the moment, it's happening in America and elsewhere, where the authorities are taking children away from their families for the most extraordinary reasons. I'll give you an example, and like I say, this is not rare. We had a, a case in Britain recently where these parents spent 38,000 pounds on fertility treatment to have a child. When the child was born, soon after the child came home from the hospital, a social worker came around and the mother just joked that giving birth had ruined her figure. On the basis of that, the child was taken away. And we're seeing extraordinary examples of the, of the so-called justification for taking children and the state taking control of them. And what then happens, and happens in this case, is the social services say to them, okay, we're taking your child away, we're going to give it to foster parents of, of our choice. Now, you, you have a choice. You can either accept this, in which case you might see your children on, you know, um, access time here and there, or you can challenge what this decision, in which case you'll never see your children again. And the decisions are then made in secret family courts, which are not allowed to be reported by the media, 
um, where um, a single judge is making the decisions. And, you know, if you describe this society to people a few years ago, you'd say, you've got to be talking about China, man, you? Uh, no, this is America. This is Britain. This is, this is Europe. This is the so-called civilized world that it's happening in. And it's not the end of it. It's just the latest step in the, the, the tiptoe towards total state control of children. And that's what they want. And uh, uh, we either put a line in the sand now or regret it not too far in the future.